welcome. This is Sahara playing Pillars of Eternity, Deadfire. We are on the island of, um, where are we at? <laughs> we're, we're on the island of, um, oh, I can't even think of the name of it. Oh, T Tika, Tikawana, whatever. Yeah. So, um, but we're, we're checking out all the areas that were on this map before we went into the little town here. All right. So here we go. All right, what's going on here? Just says ravine, okay. I'll see what I can find. I know we got conversations that need to be had with, oh, you leveled up again? I just leveled you. All right, um, we're gonna do alchemy this time. And... You probably need to know your history. You get one. I think I already got this one. Yeah, the um tough. Let's do that. Unless I didn't do any spells last time, actually. What do you have here? Moons, torment. I wish you had healing. Um, these are what? These means these are blast of... What does that little sign mean? Oh, these are in his grimoire, I think. That's what that... That's what that represents. Okay, those little things represent... Bleh, represent what's in his grimoire. Call to slumber causes a group of enemies to momentarily fall asleep. Hmm, that's not bad. But too bad you don't have any... Um, Blast of Frost. Any healing ones. I don't see anything that even looks like healing. Minor Arcane Reflection. Dimensional Shift. So, so yeah. So when you have these in your... Uh, inventory, your, uh, you know, your your slots. That that's how they show up here, I guess. So what? I'm, okay, is this is infused with vital essence. Uses a caster with vitality, granting them the fit. No, um, we don't even have that in any of our. Well, see, he's got this even though it's not in his grimoire. Isn't that odd? Or is it letting us know that since you have these grimoires, I'm going to have to look at that. I don't need to do them on here. Is that what that means? Hmm. An insidious magical contingency uh, activates when the caster is bloodied or lower. But I wanted the one that was, um... What was the one? Called the Slumber. See, I guess I'm not understanding how that... Because it took one of them away. So I'll have to look at that when we go into battle here. Whoa, whoa, look. Yeah, I see it. So yes. if I click on you and then Oh, I can choose which grimoires to use. I see. That's how that works. That's the fireball one, but if I go here, call to slumber, malignant cloud, here it is, call to slumber. Hmm. 
Okay. I think I, I well, I maybe might have it. <laughs> I don't know. Don't ask me. Huh? Um. After him. Take the. Okay. You all attack. Just do whatever you want. You're going to do call to slumber while we're see how this works. Oh, would you look at this? Oh, there's a trap. Sure. Oh, that's nice. Well, you know you can attack at any time. You like that? Let's go. Are you doing anything? You are, okay. But are you doing any of your cyber stuff? Um... Cypher. You're not doing any of your cypher stuff. I have you aggressive. Um, random. Round robin. Let's do round robin. Target has concentration. See, I. Mm, No, we want to delete that. Okay. Let's do it. Oh, he is doing something. Okay. So he is doing something. Leave it to me. Uh, this driftwood frame is string is strung with bones and sea seashells. Blah, blah, blah. They tinkle in the breeze. Aye, aye. Yeah. I can is be there, quiet. Is there a cave can. or something up here? Okay. Wait. Have, look there. Oh, we got more. We got a mage up here, too. Yes? So that mage, we know, is not going to go anywhere. Ah, it's worse than rough! Ah. And you are going to... I think you, because you're a cypher, you have to wait to do things. You can do what? Um, oiling spray, overwhelming wave. There's people there in front of you. Okay, that isn't going to work. Purge, oh, that's a purge of toxins. Uh, chill fog. Rather difficult. Yeah, you need to get down here. Concentrate. You need to get down here, Aloth. Come on. Uh oh. Uh oh. Didn't do this one well, did I? Okay, do your. This does not work. <laughs> I'm not doing well here, am I? Okay, who is this? That's you. Why is it not? How come you're not healing yourself? 
do this. Looks like Takehu's out of the fight. After him. See you, last week too. Where are you? No, you come down here and help him. Now we come up here and help. That must hurt. See you, must me too. She just kind of glided like across that? the ground. Sorry, guys. All right. Sure. Fish. And always use the fish. Oh, we got more booby traps. Sections of the border boulder have been etched with strange ruins and glyphs. Many of them seem to represent local plants and wildlife. Yeah. Well, no, 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 no. Oh, I did it if anyway. We can rest for a bit. Yeah. I'd be much obliged. I know. I'm sorry. I meant to not do that. I? No, this. We got a potion of defense, oil. Yeah, let's go ahead and end. Um, okay. Because you have lingering frailty. We all have something on us, don't we? Okay. Rest. Sorry, guys. Okay, is this the end of this? No, it is not. So I can't get over here, but I can go a little bit further. <clears throat> Let's take a look. Very well. A little further this way, maybe? Well, that's really pretty. It looked like there was a waterfall when they were showing the little, I like, don't... another trap. Why not? Wonder what this is. Okay. Sure. It's up here. Uh oh. A large la lagopith, a blood mother, a brood mother by her size and crest, surfaces from the pool. Around her neck hangs a knotted cord strung with tiny ozen bits. Odds and ends. She chirps softly. As you draw closer, she gurgles in agitation but does not attack. She dives back down and disappears. You hear splashing and chattering coming from further up the slope. Okay. An invitation? Or a trap? Yeah, I wonder about that. Let's go down these stairs first. How did they even know I was here if I'm in stealth, right? I sense a predator in the water. Do you? I sense a predator in the water. Okay. Assassin Vine. So we know there's something hmm. here. No problem. All right, can we do our... There's something else. Okay, you go to that. Okay, guys, how come we're not attacking? Because I didn't tell you to. After him. Ah, lava beyond. 
Let's call my weapon. Ha! Don't let me move down any further than this. There we go. Okay. We got awakened wood. This is blood moss. Out of you. It. Leave it to me. Oh. You find an old stone copper, pitted and mottled by long exposure to the elements. The lid is cracked, but thick, woody vines like giant's fingers hold it in place. Have someone pull the vines away from the chest, burn the vines with the torch, freeze ability. Cast a spell to freeze the vines. Um. Can you do it? You have blizzard or just do blizzard. The vines become rigid and pale beneath the accumulating frost until at last they shatter. New tendrils begin to wiggle from the frozen stumps. You tear off the lid before the vines can regain their grip on the copper. You retrieve an ancient bronze hatchet, pulling it free from the copper even as the vines feebly grasp at it with hungry tendrils. Gain. Okay. It is exceptional. Wood splitter. Lay damage to plant targets and targets with plant status effects. Okay. So it has. Hmm. Cool. Alright, so let's go up here. Except you're not Malay, so I haven't, I haven't been making you Malay. Um, what is the one that we just had? Um, this one here? No. It was an axe. Here it is. Compare. Not that. See, why do you have that if you have a hand? I just don't, I guess I don't understand that. Why do you have this? Let me go ahead and put this over here. I'm going to try that. Put this over here. And then give you this. Right? So then you have two of them. And we're going to put you as... Oh, and that's right. I forgot. Eater now can wear something heavier, can't he? Um, armor. Or did I sell it? I Did I sell all my heavy armor? This is all light armor. Light, medium, light, medium, light. I could get rid of this stuff. Here's some heavy armor. But it's not special. I think he's got something that's special. He does. He's got... Um, armor rating is better, even though it's not exceptional. Um, but the damage type... Yeah, he's got better what he's got now. I'll just have to keep an eye out for something better for him. All right, so let's go up here, see. Okay, so. Nice and quiet. So there's something up here. I see something blue to pick. They want to talk, it looks like. So we have, an, we have a mage, a couple mages. This, there's the brood mother. Okay. C cocking her head, the brood mother watches you and lets out an inquisitive chirp. 
chirp at her? The brood mother stops gurgling and takes a tentative step closer, craning her neck with interest. Other lag of Beth peer and chirp at you. Eater attempts a chirp of his own that sounds perhaps more like two crackers aggressively mating. <laughs> the lag of Beth stare at him in his and hiss until he stops. Eater clears his throat as though that was what he'd been doing all along. <laughs> Eater. A young Lagafeth po pokes his head out from behind one of the adults and bur blurps happily. The adult ushers it back with a firm claw. Oh, Anna. Observing the exchange, the brood mother looks at you and lets out a plaintive cry. Oh, Anna. It sounds like she's trying to say Juana. Juana? Snarls and gurgles rise in volume. The other Langafeth bare their teeth at that name. Juana. The brood mother hisses. Her attending warriors brandish spears, clubs, and blowguns. You hate the Juana. I recall when you picked up ancient Inquithin, but this? Hatchlings. She screeches, not at you, it seems, but at what you've said. Hatchlings, okay. Separin gasps, stiffens, and then blinks rapidly as if clearing his eyes. Cap, the scaly last by the Juana rounding up a pups. Marched him off towards the beach. Oh, condolences, ma'am. Rounding, he bows his head to the laugh, laugh going, Well, we just killed them in your tribe. The scaly last spied. Hmm, okay. Many calls tighten about weapons and tails flash in eager, hypnotic rhythm. The brood mother watches you. You can understand me? She bobs her head, chittering excitedly. So, what did the Juana have to do with your hatchlings? Take, take, hatchlings! She hisses, snatching and clawing at the air. Oh. So the Juana captured your young. She screeches with emotion, rocking her whole body back and forth. Her bristling fin flashes like a blade. The other Lagafeth bare their teeth even wider. Oh, I have a quest out of this. The Rude Mother's Fury. Turning her attention from you to the formation of Lagafeth, the Brood Mother hisses and Flicks her tail, gesturing down toward the bottom of the ravine and toward the village. I figured that's where it was at. The others bobbed their heads in agreement. Oh, Anna. I can rescue your hatchlings, but your clan must stay away from the village. The brood mother clutters and blinks at you, tilting her head this way and that. At last, she raises her head and thrills to the tree tops. One by one, the other lag fifth lower their weapons, and snap their jaws shut. Please! She turns her fish eyes on you. Lings. Oh, we gotta do it. Yeah, we gotta do it, I know. I know, we gotta do it. Are you gonna let us over around there so we can look and see what's over here? Because there was stuff I wanted to take. I bet I can't. You should... See this. Yeah, that's stealing. I figured it would be. But I can take this stuff. All right. So if I go stealth. Uh, quickly and quietly. Sure. Why not? Now I can take it. Blessed incense. Yeah, I didn't think I'd be able to take it. They're too close to me. Okay. We will go down and talk to the villagers. But I got XP for untrapping that, so that's what happened. So that was worth it. Okay.
I have a feeling these villagers are not going to be nice. That is my thought anyway. So I think they they did poison that expedition that came through here. Mm hmm. I think we got everything else here done. Okay, so let's go into this little village. Hi, Seraphin. Is there anything you have a hard time with, aside from humility? Oh, I reckon I'll be a fancy of most things. More so, all things poetical. If only we were all as confident in real skills as you are in imagined ones. Oh. You'd be right surprised how far confidence will take you, lad. Or you'd have to give it a try. Yeah, I do have to agree. He doesn't have much confidence in himself. Okay, so we have all these sailors now. Did you get healed, by the way? We need a boatswain. So where does a boatswain even go? Hmm? So this, um, these are, oh, we have a boatswain here. Boatswain. Where do they go? Um, you must return to the shipyard. Oh, I'm sorry. What does it say? You must return to the shipyard and Nekitaka to change that slot. Oh, so I have one. But... How come it's Nia? Nia. I'm not understanding when I picked picked him up. But I have to go. Okay, so I have to go back to Nikitaka to change this. That's kind of a pain. But where do we even put him on here? I think it would go here, right? No, these are the cannoneers. A boatswain would be down here. I assume. Anyway, okay. Let's go take a look around, guys. Soon the director will send supplies and immenses and soldiers. Unless... Uh, you have room on your ship? He looks at you needing his knuckles. Your captain had some dark plans for the tribe. Mm. What has you so oh this is the this is isn't the guy that we brought on in as a cook? Oh, as soon as we got back he must have got off ship. Unless you have room on your ship. Hmm. What has you on so on edge? When we landed in Tikawara, the chieftain <laughs> gave us a welcome treat for the dukes. Oh, he's the one who got sick. Oh, that's right. That's right. <laughs> we feast, danced, drank, and slept. Only so we could feast, dance, and drink more. You were eventually, you were awfully busy for a man claiming to be ill. Yeah. Perco plank on it. Music and ale are medicine for the soul. He puts a hand over his heart and glares at you. He's, and gives you a sheepish look. Mm. <sighs> Even so, they did nothing to soften Anaharu. He said we had come to rub and plunder. He and Nairi turned the villagers against us. Did you not come to plunder? Akara, I misunderstood your mission. He flinches back from Takia, his eyes wide with alarm, while until he clears his throat and focuses back on you. After that, we slept on the boat and took turns watching the shore. Except for me. I had to rest and recover, of course. Mm -hmm. But in the early hours, our lookout Soruano and Anaharu disappeared together. Where did they go? I am sure I do not know. All I heard was that they left the village. And by the afternoon, only Ruano returned. Now no one here will even talk of Anaharu. Suspicious, no? 
Our captain was eager to leave before the winds changed again. You mentioned N N Natari. The priestess. She imagines me in the jaws of our fish goddess. I know it. Hmm. She lurks in the shrine next to that awful statue. I cannot stand her wicked looks, but if she does not scare you, then maybe you talk to her. Your captain has some dark plans for the tribe. Give him bit Beezy's, um, well, I found the remains of your expedition. That you mean? Madiko. If the expedition failed, the company will hesitate to finance a second one. They might close the book forever. Yeah. Hopefully. If their work was finished, their families in the republics would be compensated. He looks at you beseechingly. No. If their work was finished, indeed, uh-huh. Perhaps I should only be grateful they left me here. He looks away. So, um, your captain has some dark plans for the tribe. Wait. What do you mean? He takes the pages from you and flips to them. Then he stops, one hand frozen up above the stained paper. He looks up at you and laughs nervously. Per complain, Kenneth. You cannot take these things so seriously. As I was an academy brat hoping to catch the director's notice. Hmm, but fresh beads of sweat, sweat pop from his forehead. You're lying. And anyway, this has nothing to do with me. I am just a cook. He tugs at his collar. Peeling the, so the sweat-soaked cloth from his chest. Better prove it by cooking us something real tasty. Eater looks around hopefully for supporters. <laughs> I will see this gets back to the director in Neketaka. No need to worry. He gives you a strained smile and tucks the papers away as fast as he can. Oh, I need supplies. The captain left all but the essentials with me. I have sustained myself trading with the villagers. Ecosi, but I'm almost out of ale. He gives you a weak smile and chills off his wares. Um... You don't have anything. Not really. Grimoire of dis disruption, huh? I think we have enough grimoires for now. You don't have anything. That I want. Except for maybe this. They're not, they don't do much though. Mm. Hammer and chisel. So... I must watch the supplies at the trading post. You will come to check with me, yes? Okay, so was this him here that I was speaking to? He didn't have a name. There he is. Okay. As you, hear, as you near the dock, voices roar over the din of the waves. It seems as if the entire village has gathered, and many of them don't seem happy. I hope that's not for us. Yeah. They argue with one another, pointing into the distance, but at your approach, they turn to stare at you, their eyes wide with apprehension or anticipation. The crowd parts for the Ranga, whose grin is as broad as his shoulders. My fishermen saw your boat sailing from Pococahara. The storms, they parted like a school of fish before Nagati herself. He wipes his brow with the back of his hand. Yeah, a new ha won't try that a second time. A hush falls upon the crowd as you speak the name. Ra Nuo clears his throat, clearly eager to move on. Now, the Valian Trading Company will send ships, people, and supplies. Tikawawa will be the greatest port east of Nekataka. First, they must clear room for docks and storehouses. But that will be many months from now, no? The dwarf wipes his brow, considering the beach and the half-finished, half-painted huts built along it. The young priestess glares with open malice, the angles of her crossed arms and clenched jaw as sharp as daggers. Already they make plans. 
If that is all, I should be going. <clears throat> I see this is a turn in our fortunes. The first of many. You are always welcome among us. Accept this and know our thanks. Exceptional spear, huh? The others nod and disperse, murmuring to one another as they scatter across the village. I'm not quite sure what that was. So they wanted the Valian Training Company to come to give them goods? I suppose... It is a bad omen to have a priestess so young. Age is no assurance of wisdom. Remember Anna? Still your tongue. Amira's winds will surely carry your words. Hmm. Time to see and not be seen. No problem. Sure. Maybe still in, but I'm st able to do it, so I'm doing it. All right. Small fish, more bone than meat, dry on the rack. Their eyes are sunken and. Come on. Leave it. There's nothing there. Who are you? Oh, there's an abandoned cat over here. Really? Another one. I hope that your presence is a favorable omen. Quit your chirping. I have no fish for you. Who is it? Oh, these are the hatchlings. Okay. Full tides. The fisherman lowers his head in greeting and wipes his hands on his strong, on his sarong, which is mottled with fish guts. He doesn't meet your gaze. What can you tell me about this area? The high tide is stingy with fish, and the low tide even more so. He points down the beach to a lonely rack strung with a few scrawny fish. Well, the fish do not swim to you, brother? Hmm, strange. Akira. For Ingati does not bless us all equally. He swallows and glances toward the sea. What more you need? Um... So why are those Langofet caged? Himwihi and the other Mataru found them when they explored the island. He looks at the creatures with mangled tribulation and disgust. They bare their teeth in response. Flies buzzing around their clouded, gunky eyes and the dull patches on their scales. Said maybe we train them to build. And if the soil and sea are misers here, then we eat them. He shrugs, scratching at his incurved belly. Eater's hand begins to drift slowly toward his weapon. He blinks at your companion impassively, gathering, glancing toward the sea with an air of mild impatience. Well, I need to free those hatchlings. Are you crazy? Then him we he will go and blame me. You see the woman at the trading post? The angry one? He grabs your arm with a strong, sticky hand and points across the dock to a scrawling woman who stands with her arms folded. She will have my corpse for bait if you do this. Why would she blame you? She despises me. How could disaster not be my fault? Besides, the Ranga will bury her at high tide if she so much as insults you. Or any foreigner. I see. At least go and see her before you release her prizes. Then... Maybe I find some other place to be until her anger cools. He lets go of your arm, leave him behind a few gleaming fish scales. Okay. We're here to get you, little hatchlings. Housework makes Nagati smile. There's a craftsman over here. Sure. 
This is woven from Cora Reeds, a hardy but flexible material smelling of sea salt. Oh, filthy lizards. Even here, I always smell them. Vegetables. I hate taking from them because I, I feel- I can never eat a dwarf. For what? Play along. I choose the belly, rich and fatty. We are Raparu, you fools. We would only get the gristle between his toes. Yeah, unfortunately, you're right. So you're talking about eating dwarves. Okay. Yeah? My eyes are peeled. Leave it to me. You may be poor, but I'm taking from you. Got it. Um... These fruits are small and un underripe. Most are riddled with worm holes. Well, maybe I didn't want it after all. Mm-hmm. Why not? Nothing I really need. Oh, this is where your shop is at. Oh, that's right. Okay. So this is who? Quietly. Nope, it's taking me over to the other side. Yeah. So who are you? The woman stands outside the half-finished building, arms crossed, as if in protest of any shelter it might offer. She looks like she's scowling, but the scars on her face make it hard to tell. An outsider in Tiquara? Who are you, stranger? Her hand strays toward a hide belt cinched tightly about her waist. Tikara. I am Corinne, captain of the Defiant. A captain! If you had sailed downwind of the island, you would have moved on, I say. I tell Ranga Ruanu that the stench of Tikawara will drive away friend and outsider alike. Do you smell it? Mm, smells like a beachside village to me. Yeah, what are you talking about? I speak of the Lagufath. There is no food on this barren island that those monsters do not steal. Her scars are like seams, tugging her face into a scowl. Yeah, but... How could you say no to those little faces? Always they circle our village looking for weaknesses. She shakes her finger, making an argument she seems to have made many times before. I push the cage with the young ones farther toward the beach, but I smell them even here. It's no wonder they come here when the beach smells like a Lagafeth hatchery, yep. Better to keep them under our thumb than sharpening blow darts, I say. A week ago, I tracked the fish to Hoina Ravine, so I challenged the Mataru to a hunting competition. My mother's belt for the brood mother's head. Hmm, grinning, she thumbs the hide belt slung across her waist. Wow. My mother's belt for the brood mother's head. It is not every day that newcomers land on our beaches. What say you show me how outsiders deal with Lagufath? You seem strong enough to handle a few Lagafath. Akira, you are perceptive for being outside the tribe. I would lead the charge, but our Ranga orders us to guard the Valians and their supplies. This is sorry work for Mataru, I say. She folds her arms tighter, looking at the cobbled together building as though she'd like to kick it down. Mm, I'll consider it. Keep your eyes and ears open. The brood is daring when the mother is close. Hmm. I'll have that fish woman's head mounted in my hut before long. Um, I'd like to hire some help from my adventurers. What are you doing with this shipwreck? Ranga wanted a trading post. She glowers at the strange building, which appears to be part scaffolding and part shipwreck. He said it will bring more valians like the sweaty dwarf. 
Then they will bring food and supplies and their sweaty money. A shiver of disgust rippled across her face. What's wrong with that? Always I stand here. This is no job for the Mataru. We hunt, fight, and lead. She paces next to the trading pulse, restless energy practically quivering through her arms and legs. So why aren't you running, hunting or fishing? What is there to hunt on this heap of rock and moss? No game, only Lagofath skulking in Hoina Ravine. Well then why are you here? Why don't you move to another island? Even the antelope know there is no fit home. The grasses are thin and the trees are like a child's bones. Small and soft. So why did you guys settle here to begin with? Even to build this, we must hike up the mountain for wood. She taps the side of the trading post with her knuckles. Hmm. Can I buy some supplies? Am I Kuaru? Do I dirty my fingers with coins a thousand hands have touched? Never. Go see the sweaty one, the dwarf. He washes his hands sometimes. Hmm, I'd like to hire some help. At last, a job worthy of Mataru. Choose from the finest hunters and warriors. These are not, these are adventurers, so I don't need these at all. Mm -mm. Nope. Oh, I can change out my party members here if I want. Um... Don't need to do that. All right, so we're going to make her mad. For what do you linger here? The village is much too quiet. Well, um, we need to release the Lagafet's hatchlings. She throws her head back and laughs. <laughs> but you do not laugh. Then you do not joke. For what would I do this foolish thing? She wipes a tear of merriment from the corner of her eyes. Okay, we have diplomacy and insight. They have clans and families. What would you do if someone caged your children? You want them to leave you alone, right? Release their young and they will. They are animals. They hunt where they smell food, and they smell food in our village. She leans forward and speaks slowly as though explaining this to a child. If I release the young ones, then they attack when they grow big. Well, I hope they don't wait that long. I want to see them attack when they're little, with those tiny claws and fish teeth. <laughs> then raise your hand to the little ones and see how they fight back. She stares down Eater as a look of horror overcomes him. Lack Lackafith are reclusive by nature. They would avoid the village if you did not have their young. When they ran from me before, I thought it was only my weapon they feared. She laughs again, but tapers off into a pensive silence. But suppose you are right. Then I do not have to suffer their stench. Take the key, then, and yell for help if anything goes wrong. She passes you the key with one hand and hefts her weapon in the other. Animal kindness, farewell, thank you. I mean, I could have just broken him out myself, I'm sure, without the key, right? Okay, so we have, that's the cage, <clears throat> that's the trading post. The this village is starves, and you hide Koiki fruit? I hide nothing, you bloated puffer fish. Traitor! Gatti's jaws will close around you! These people are just pathetic, they really are. Confess to Val, or will you let good food rot? A young warrior's forehead is burled with lines and beaded with perspiration. He stands over a man bound to a pole. Does mine look like a full belly, idiot? Question the rest of the Raparu. We all hunger. Every word out of the bound man emerges as an agonized wheeze. He glares up at Muku. Disgrace. Any other Raparu has worked ten times in a day what you have in your life, and they do not complain. The warrior pulls a dagger from his belt and thumbs the tip thoughtfully. Blinking, he turns to you, wearing a bright, friendly smile. Hmm. See, his name is in red, so you've got to think that he's evil or something, right? His face lights up as he studies the glowing crescent above your head. 
Akira, you must forgive my shock. Kith do not visit often, much less the gods. For what do you make of this hagfish, huh? Will Tamao confess if I tighten the ropes? He adjusts to the bound man. You know you catch more flies with honey than vinegar. He blinks momentary perplexed. The Keho caught this wretch stealing the last of the Koiki fruit. The tribe was to feast on it for a harvest ceremony. The Koiki will reveal itself when you can smell it from Nekataka, I say. I stole no Koiki, but I wish I had. I would have hid it somewhere most unpleasant. He bares his teeth in a defiant grin. <sighs> You hear this? A second chance we give, and Tamal throws it in our faces. He nod he holds the blade level with his heart. Hmm. Would it make things better if I had some spare Kitiki food on hand? What was this Kitiki ceremony? We would have eaten the last of the Kawiki as a tribe. This way we give our thanks to Kahopa, the eel of life. Now this cannot happen. Our harvest fails because this one puts his empty stomach higher than the gods. Um, did anyone think saving the seeds might be a good idea? Isn't it traditional to eat the whole fruit, seeds and all? Akira, just so. To consume the fruit, seeds and all. This is how we pray to Kahopa for bounty. He's done this before? Lied and stolen? Akira. When we have food, he takes more than he deserves. He steals baskets and pots, and even pilfered a spearhead from a warrior on the hunt. Exasperated, he mops his brow with the back of his hand. I say there is no person in Tikawara who he has not wronged in some way. Maybe no person in the Deadfire. What say you, Tamari? I say I deserve what others have in plenty. Shade. A full belly. A moment to kneel on cool sands. We stopped being a tribe when Ruanu dragged us into the path of the outsiders. Now we can only save ourselves. You shame us, Tamau. To return in your next life as a coconut crab would be too kind. <laughs> um. So you have your guilty man. What's to be done? The Keho's word is enough to give Tamau over to the waves. Better to drown as an innocent man than starve with you fools. He spits, but without the forward momentum, it just dribbles on his chin and turns his gaze away, doing his best to ignore him. Justice does not fill our stomachs or our hearts. It brings the gods no closer to ending this famine. His hand strays toward his stomach. He glances out to the horizon. Whisper a good word to Yurango's ear and I'll consider it. Hmm. I owe the gods a favor. Your Katiki is as good as found. Akira, you would do this? I say, our Ranga will dedicate the feast of the last Kawiki to your name. He claps you on the shoulder, leaving tomorrow all but forgotten. Until the Kawiki is found, I will delight in prodding this stubborn eel for answers. He touches the point of his dagger, his lips spreading into a broad grin. You are free to question him and your custom, I say. And Peheko, he tarries often by the beach. Mm, what do you do here? I am a warrior, like most Mataru. Can you not tell? We have little reason to fight on Tikawara. Except when the fishermen drink too much of the dwarf man's liquor. Yeah, funny thing I learned about Grog back on a sorcerer. It be birthing up quarrels as often as it be burying them. He grins, pulls his skin from his belt, and takes a swig. Yep. But these are only small fights. Not like it was on the island we left before, when the, the pirates, the, the slave... His expression goes slack. For several seconds, his widening eyes stare blankly into some remembered horror. That's right. They got pushed off their island by the slavers and the pirates. But what did I say? Ah, Tikawara does not give it abundance, but there are worse things, Akira. I'd like to know more about the more. I'd like to know about the village. They will speak with the Ranga. His lodge is at the top of the hill, past the trading post. 
Nairi also knows much, but she is quiet ever since. His eyes go wide as he catches himself. He clears his throat. Nairi, she tends the shrine in the northwest part of town, near the statue of Gati. Yes. Okay. So I had a quest. Plucked fruit. The last of the tribe's fruit is missing. Investigate the missing around the village. The fishermen... I may be able to learn more by talking to... The bound man casts a weary stare down at you, his arm tightening weakly beneath their restraints. I say that a bound man is usually a more welcoming sight than this. Oh, God. You look at me for what? To watch me shrivel up in the sun? It may be a trick of the light, but the man's emanci emanci emanciated scrawl does appear shriveled. You still the last of the tribe's fruit? If only my brain and belly had coordinated. I say I would have tried sooner. Pikeho hates me because I insult his puny catches of fish. All he does is weigh down his boat. For this, he accuses me. What's your side of the story? Pikeho says I was skulking by the drying hut north of the Ranga's home. Ikira, this is so. I would have taken the Kohiki, but it was already gone. Can you think of anyone so you are just a thief? I stole no Koiki. And you are not my Renga. Unless you come to put a spear through Mukumu's eye, keep your distance, I say. Can you think of anyone else who might have taken it? It is said the Roparu share one empty stomach. Blame any of them, I say. The tribe drives me out like jerky because I am hated, not because I am a Koiki thief. Tell me about yourself. I have seen better days than this. I labor for the tribe, but our Ranga saves the best of everything for his warriors. Yeah, they would. I can understand that. For what does a warrior need with a full stomach when we are not at war? No, that's true, too. I have some questions. Then maybe you ask someone with both feet on the ground. I need to conserve my strength. Okay, so... The cage, the trading post. Um, common storage huts, the chieftain's hum, the shrine. So was there a Pikiki down here or whatever his name was? I don't remember seeing the name of all these fishermen down here. All I saw was a, I saw him? Is this him they're talking of? You need something? Uh, Mikamu says you caught stealing, yeah. Ikira. He pauses and stares at you with wide eyes. Tamau was creeping around the drying hut where we stored Kawiki for the ceremony, north of our Ranga's home. I grabbed Tamau by the wrist and dragged him to Makumu. We found all of the Kawiki were gone. The snake brought this on himself, I say. Now Makuma will deliver him to Tangaloa's maw, where he belongs. Sounds like the type of story he would tell. Do you actually see tomorrow with any... Yeah. Can you think of anything he, that might help me find the... Yeah. Did you actually see him with any... Akira, it is as I said. Tamau was near the Kowiki hut. Stuffing his face, I say. And if he will not admit it in this life, he will pay in the next one. Um, can you think of anything that might help me find the fruit? He shakes his head, his eyes turning downcast. I know that Makumu wished to give the fruit to Wingati with a prayer to pull back her furious storms. Now that the storms are gone, I wonder how closely the goddess listens to our pleas. Ashi Mamu told me that Kaniki were for a harvest ritual. He opens his mouth to retort, but closes it and hangs his head. It is said the gods piss on the souls of liars before sending them back to Aora as Krill. Tamau stole no Koiki. 
It is said that gods piss on the souls of liars before sending them back to Eora. Kahopa must have made Tamau from sand lice, because he gives nothing to the tribe, only takes. Did you steal it? Tamau isn't the one impl um Tamau isn't the one implicating an innocent man. Tamau is as innocent as a skulking tide pool worm. He hates the tribe. Pity and charity fill his belly and shell pouch. And he has not strained a muscle to serve anyone but himself. Knowing this does not bring the Kowiki back to the drying hut, but it will help to heal the tribe. Would um, the Mau accept your, your retraction without K Kawiki to prove it? No. He wants the Kawiki and the guilty. So do we all, I say. I cannot say if the true thief covered their tracks, since Makumu never looked for clues. But the drying hut? Ikira, in his sandals, this is where I would look. Okay. Can I tell them I'm going to release the... You need something? No, okay. Himwihi and the other said maybe we... The swabby on a sorcerer once suggested we dine on fish man, mate. Not an ant complained when Romaro put him off at the next port. He blinks at your companion impassively, glancing toward the sea with an air of mild impatience. Okay, whatever, so... Okay, Broodmother's Fury. Look out! They escape! Oh, leaping from the water, the Broodmother eagerly chirps and beckons toward her hatchlings. They rally around her with unbridled joy. She lets out a low-pitched warble when she sees you. So you followed me? The brood mother makes a show of removing her necklace and laying it out on the sand, then gesturing from you to the necklace and back again. Chirping and waving her crust, the brood mother and her hatchlings dive back into the ocean. Oh, oh, I thought I was going to have to take... I do not come back. I was thinking I was going to have to take them, um, um... That's too funny. I was thinking I was going to have to take them back in my pack. <laughs> you know how everything goes in the pack? In RPGs? Yeah, okay, so what did she leave me? Leave it to me. Babbles of the Finn. Yeah, I was really thinking that was gonna. Um. Here it is. <clears throat> Constitution, intellect, cruelty, and curials. This necklace is an uh, electric collection of deritus, trinkets, and ottomans that caught the eye of his brood mother owner. These glittering prizes act as a banner and beacon to lesser, inspiring them to unlikely bravery. Though there is likely no magic in this humble device, it does seem to resonate with the brood mother's arrogance and dominance. So constitution and okay, I think everybody's got ring of overseen. Do you need a ring? You don't have any. You do have a ring. How about you? And do you have a cloak? No, you do not. Okay, so we got that quest done. Now we need to go up here and figure out what happened to all the damn fruit. Right? Why not? This is woven from 
reads a hardy but flexible material. Okay, so this is the Kura Hut. The Kura Hut? Is that like the curing hut? Is that what? No, that's a storage hut. Who is this? It's a craftswoman. Okay. Hmm. Time to see and not got it. Leave it to me. Uh oh. Somebody's journal. Rongi's journal. If not for the food shortage, Ratuo would ask for what I bring. So many crabs from the beach. They take it to the sand at midnight and scuttle around my feet, as hungry as the rest of us, I say. The work is difficult enough without them pinching my ankles and going after the prize. I thank Nagatia for every day that Rutunio does not ask. The shore warms by day and cools by night. If this will get the job done, then even Canopa might forgive me. Only at midnight can I check. Someday... The tribe will know what I do, but until that day, no one may know. In the meantime, I say the beach is so lonely. Does it mean that she stole? Are you going to go away? Sure. What is this? Oh, just nuts. Okay, so... This Amano man seems lost in thought. His clothes are neat and clean, but he's tugging at the fringe of his sash, which he's worried into a long, loose thread. He looks up at you, his blurry eyes suddenly sharp and alert. What say? You are new to Tikiwar? Um, what do you do here? I weave baskets of mats, strong and soft, just as my mother's cousin taught me. In the afternoon, I will go to the trading post to sell them. Of course... All that I earn goes back to the Ranga first. This is prize share. Um, prize share? Ikira, we trust in our Ranga to dispense our food, goods, and coin to the tribe. The Mataru get the best of all, and then the Kwaru. The Raparu share what is left among themselves. Yeah, that is, that's nasty. Mukumu sees to it. The Tamau is made an example of what breaking prize share looks like. So what do you know about the Lengpathen imprisoned in the village? Very little. This is a question for Himwihi if you can weather her temper. She stands guard by the trading post. Only do not remind her of that fact. Do you know anything about the missing fruit? Only the Tamau has slept like a fat tortoise, while the rest of us chew on reeds to fool our bellies. Ikira. No one could be less surprised. Tamau had this coming. So... You don't seem particularly upset about it. Guilty or no, being tossed to the waves is what Tamau deserves. I have no tears for him. He complained until the Ranga gave him my finest mats and then left him out for the sport of beasts. Let the gods sort him. Hmm... Rogue trickster, lie. Relax, I won't say anything that implicates you. So even if tomorrow is innocent, you don't care? The tribe has challenges enough without Juana eating from each other's plates. You overstep for a stranger, an outsider. I say you should go back to the shore that welcomes you. He turns away and says no more. So... What was it? Plucked fruit? Something like that? Um... Where was it? Plucked fruit. Investigate. Okay, so Mr. Tamani did not still... He mentioned that the fruit was kept in a drying hut north of the Ranga's home. James is innocent. Roga acted particularly dismissive of Tamana's possible innocence. It might be worth keeping an eye on him. Yeah, especially after reading his journal, right? 
Who are you? They're all thinking that. Pick fruit. Every midnight, no one knows why. So I have to wait and go in on a midnight. I guess that's my whole thing, right? My eyes are peeled. He's not leaving that. Be yours to command, Captain. Oops, sorry. I'm, I'm trying to leave. I was trying to leave. Yeah, it's an hour. Okay, so we've got a couple more places to go, and then we have to go down to the beach at midnight. So we got here to go, the storage hut, um, the chieftain's hut, and then the shrine. I think we'll go to the shrine first since, since we're over this way. The pleasure um, is mine. So if you're enjoying, click like, leave a comment, subscribe, and thank you so much for watching. Sahara out.